Huh, Spider-Man's out. Let's see the reviews then. Wait, hold up. What? This is the greatest film ever made. I left my wife for this movie. Better than Shrek, but, but that's impossible. Surely it can't be that good. Well, there's only one way to find out. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, can I get a ticket for Spider-Man, please? Wait, you haven't seen it, bro? Oh, it's a great movie, man. You're gonna love it. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I've heard. Can I get my ticket, please? Yeah, sure, bro. Great movie, man. I know you're gonna love it. My favorite part was when Spider-Man oh, bought the hell bot. No, man. And then Ned MJ himself, man. Oh, man. Was so awesome. And then uh, Venom fought Yoda. Can I just have my ticket, please? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, bro. Here you go, man. I like you, man. You're a good fucking guy. I, I like you. Okay, right. Uh, can I get some snacks too? Oh yeah, sure bro. Uh, I can get you popcorn for 10, or a slushy for five, uh... 10 quid? What? Yeah, what about it? Hey man, I thought we were cool. Why'd you have to fucking kill me, man? That is not cool, bro. Fuck you. I just start the movie, man. I ain't got time for this fucking shit. So the movie starts right where Far From Home left off, with Mysterio face revealing Peter. So, Dream just did a face reveal. You're about to wake up. I'm framing him for his murder. After escaping from an angry mob, Peter calls his lawyer, who helps get his charges dropped. Despite this, a lot of the public still hate him, believing that he did it. After he, MJ, and Ned are all rejected from MIT due to the drama, he goes to see Doctor Strange to see if he can help him get in. Doctor Strange reluctantly tells him that he can perform a spell that would make everyone forget he was Spider-Man, thus ridding him of his problems. However, the spell becomes unstable after Peter requests too many people that he doesn't want to forget that he's Spider-Man. Doctor Strange then has to contain the spell to stop it from damaging the fabric of reality. After all this, we find out that Peter would rather ask this random guy to perform a magic spell that could potentially destroy reality than talk to a woman. Of course, so would I. Peter rushes to find the female before she boards her plane so he can appeal his application to MIT. But then... Hello, Peter. Hey, Peter. He fights Dr. Octopus, eventually defeating him by controlling his tentacles, and then saving the wimp. <laughs> and then saving the woman. Finally getting a place for him and his friends at MIT. But then, my man Willem Dafoe shows up. Man, this guy did such a good job in this movie. Or any movie he's in. One minute we see Norman Osborn, a harmless shell of a man, and the next, a ruthless, terrifying monster who really gets into your head. Before he has a chance to do anything though, Peter is teleported back to Doctor Strange's basement where Doc Ock and the Lizard are imprisoned. Now, a lot of people complain that Mark Zuckerberg didn't really do a lot in this movie. What? Oh, uh, oh wait, I'm thinking of The Social Network. You know, the other movie where Andrew Garfield fights a lizard man. Mark! Doctor Strange says that the failed spell inadvertently caused these villains to be pulled into their reality. Peter has to find the rest of them and eventually captures Electro and the Sandman. Norman then smashes the green goblin mask. I wear a mask with a smile. <laughs> and is found wandering around like a crazy man by Aunt May. Much like mine, Doctor Strange's basement is now full of people that need to be sent somewhere else. The only difference is, I do it for money. <laughs> Doctor Strange tells Peter that they need to send the villains back to their dimension, reversing the spell, but that if they return, they will die. And this is where one of the best elements of the film, or any film for that matter, comes into play. And that is Consequence. Something I haven't really seen much of in superhero movies. Up until this point, the choices Peter made, while maybe being slightly misguided, didn't really have any effect. Asking Doctor Strange to perform the spell and then messing it up didn't do much save for destroying a few roads and cables. But now when Peter makes the moral decision to stop the villains being killed, he's making a real choice with real consequences to his actions. He isn't aware of the indirect consequences maybe, but he still caused them and it creates an interesting moral dilemma. Peter steals the box from Strange in an effort to stop the villains from being killed. Doctor Strange chases after him and sends him to the mirror dimension, telling him he's making a big mistake. It's one of the most visually striking scenes in the movie, and kind of made me think about how much of these movies is actually just a green screen. Huh. Spider-Man's out. Let's see the reviews then.
Peter steals Doctor Strange's ring and traps him in the mirror dimension, giving the ring and the box to Ned and MJ and releasing the prisoners. They decide that they should try and cure the villains of their powers, thus rendering them harmless when they get sent back to their dimensions. Doc Ock is cured. D Doc Ock? Doc Ock is cured and Electro is almost cured until Osborn is overtaken by the Green Goblin persona and persuades him against it. While everyone else escapes, the Green Goblin attacks Peter and sends him crashing down to the ground floor of the building. Aunt May injects an antidote into the Green Goblin, but it doesn't work. The Goblin strikes her with his glider and escapes, which proves fatal. Before she dies, she tells Peter that he should never stop helping people and that With great power, there must also come great responsibility. This hits home even more because, like I said, this is the first time that Peter has ever had real consequences for something he did. I just think it's really interesting in a movie like this for a main character's death to be due to a decision that someone made. It's just not something you see very often. It's usually just, oh, big purple man punched her, or, or no. I am under the water. Please help me. After barely having time to mourn her death, he is surrounded by the authorities and has to flee the scene. We then see a guilt-ridden Peter staring at J. Jonah Jameson's news report, which blames him for the attack. Ned and MJ start to worry about Peter and use Doctor Strange's ring to try and find him. But then... Now joined by Andrew and Toby, which is what I'm going to call them because they're all called Peter Parker. Thank you Marvel for inventing multiverses. Very cool. Now joined by Andrew and Toby, they manage to find their Spider-Man, feeling distraught and hopeless. <laughs> Peter is just about to use Doctor Strange's box to say. <laughs> Peter is just about to use Doctor Strange's box to send the villains back to their deaths, which would mark the start of his Joker arc. Get what you fucking deserve! In an effort to console him, Toby and Andrew share their experiences with losing a loved one, which helps calm him down and instill a bit of hope in him. With a fresh outlook, Peter decides to honour Aunt May's wishes by helping the villains that he mistakenly brought upon the world. They all head to the school lab to produce the remaining cures and then head to the Statue of Liberty for the final battle. But first... The epic funny meta joke. How, so funny, look, there's, there's multiple Peters. Wow, oh my days, bruv. Peter! Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. Did you mean <laughs> the fight sequence is just classic superhero action. Toby kills the Sandman, and the main Spider Man kills the Lizard. He sorry, won't be stealing any personal yes. data anymore. <laughs> Doc Ock also turns up and takes back the arc reactor that Electro stole, rendering him powerless. Out of nowhere, the Green Goblin arrives and blows up the box, unleashing the spell upon them and tearing the fabric of reality. The explosion knocks MJ off the statue, and she is eventually saved by Andrew in one of the best displays of these actors' ability in the film. I really love this scene, and it's made so much more meaningful when you know that it's harkening back to Gwen Stacy's death in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Ned accidentally spawns in Doctor Strange, who is surprised to see that Spider-Man's new plan is actually working. Once Spider-Man gets a hold of the Green Goblin, he is overcome with rage and revenge and brutally beats him and almost murders him until Toby stops him. In return for him being a good moral man, he gets shanked. <laughs> After finally curing the Green Goblin, everyone takes notice of the giant hole in the sky and realise that they should probably do something about it. Peter asks Doctor Strange if he can perform a spell that would make everyone forget who he is, believing it will stop this whole mess. Doctor Strange agrees and, after some goodbyes, performs the spell. Peter visits his friends in the hopes that he can jog their memories as to who he was, but nothing seems to work. He visits Aunt May's grave and meets Happy, who asks him how he knew her. It's heartbreaking. In the final scene of the film, he puts on a homemade Spider-Man suit after hearing some criminal activity being reported and swings out into the snowy New York night, honouring Aunt May's memory and coming full circle. It's such a bittersweet ending and I appreciate the balls that they had to actually include it in a movie like this. Oh wow, I sure hope that Marvel doesn't get the rights back to Spider-Man and then make another movie completely undoing what just happened, removing any emotional depth and stakes. What I also would say is that the pacing isn't the best. In the first half of the movie, I found myself wondering when the story was really going to get good, which probably means that some of it could have been cut. But overall, I really enjoyed this movie. Not just because my boy Tobey Maguire was in it, not just because of the spectacle of the action scenes and visual effects, but because at its core, this is a good story with good nuanced characters and a world where there are real consequences to people's actions. Peter could have just gone along with Doctor Strange and allowed the villains to die, but 
That wasn't what he thought was right, and in the end, he suffered for it. Just like us, Peter cannot undo what he's done, and the consequences of it will be with him forever. But what he can do is find meaning in his life, and in his suffering. In this case, by helping others. And that, my friends, is called Stoicism. <laughs> Damn, th that, that got kind of deep there. Uh, here's, here's a video to, to, show, to cheer you up. Trust me, you're gonna laugh. Helicopter, helicopter! If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It's totally free, but you can't ever change your mind as you have to sign a contractual agreement to sell your soul. But with all that being said, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day. And, uh, bye. Hey, what happened to the fucking movie, man? Hey, what? Sir, you're under arrest for bloody mean, shooting man? someone here just two hours ago. You have the right to remain silent. Everything you say can and will be used against you in the bloody Tower of London, mate. Hey, that motherfucker deserved it, man. He spoiled the fucking movie. And he charged me dead fucking quid for fucking popcorn. Oh, oh. Uh, okay. Fair enough, sir. Sorry, my bad. Sorry, I, I didn't know. Uh, I'll see myself out. Uh, have a nice day. Shit, man. You are a bunch of... Fucking assholes, man.